Hi, I'm Alex. Welcome to the channel and thanks for tuning in. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a penny stock. Now this penny stock I think has amazing growth potential and it's still cruising under the radar of many other investors at the moment. So it's definitely one you want to check out. In this video, I'm going to touch on who the company are, what they do, everything that we as investors need to know about the company, including a couple of things that I've not seen anyone else mention, so you want to stick around for those. And then finally, what I'm going to be doing. If you like this video, please smash the like button. It's so helpful in pushing this video to a wider audience. If you like investing related content, then subscribe to the channel. I have loads more videos coming on other SPACs, other penny stocks, growth stocks, tech stocks, all of them which I think you'll find really interesting. I also have another video series planned, which is all focused on helping you become a better investor, sharing the tips and tricks that I've gained from my full-time job as a professional investor, and the things that professional investors do all the time. So I hope you find that really useful as well. I'm not a financial advisor, so this video is purely for educational and entertainment purposes only. So let's get straight into it. Who is the company and what do they do? So today we're talking about Blink Charging Company. Blink is an electric vehicle charging infrastructure business. They manufacture, operate and sell electric vehicle charging devices and infrastructure. They make their money in three main ways. Firstly, it's about 60% of their revenue is generated from customers paying to charge their electric cars. These are chargers that are operated by Blink. About 30% of their sales are generated from selling charging hardware and equipment to customers. And the final 10% of their sales is generated from payment processing and network connectivity services. They're founded in 2009, they're based in Miami, and at this point in time have around 15,000 different charging stations. As a business, they have over 180,000 customers. Now, at the time of filming, the company has a market cap of around $180 million. On an EV sales multiple basis, that's a staggering 28.1 times. And just to put that into context, versus some of the other electric vehicle related peers, Tesla is trading at 11.1 times. Now it's not until Blink is earning its revenues that it's forecast to in 2022 that it'll be trading at the same level to Tesla. And believe me, that's not easy sailing. That's multiplying their sales by around six times from where they are now. So clearly this company has a high valuation. So what do we need to know? Well, firstly, this is a penny stock. And inherently, penny stocks are riskier. They're smaller, there's less volumes traded in the market, there's greater volatility in price, there's a greater likelihood of the business failing. It's oftentimes harder for the business to raise more capital if it needs to. The list goes on. Yes, there can be great rewards from investing in the right penny stocks, but you can't go into that with your eyes closed about the risks. It's much riskier than making an investment in, say, a business like Microsoft, for example. So you need to be acutely aware of that. Next up, we need to think about the market. Now, the market Blink is operating is growing rapidly and it's forecast to grow tremendously. It's also the focus of much investor attention at the moment and so there's a lot of hype around the sector. Clearly, at a governmental level, there's a lot of focus on the green benefits of electric vehicles and this is likely to be pushed through in policies which will accelerate the growth of the electric vehicle sector. The sector is forecast to grow around 30% a year through to 2027 and so clearly a company operating in this sector, if it's positioned well, has a great growth opportunity. When investing in Blink, you're investing in the sector rather than backing a specific horse in the race. You're investing in the belief that the electrification of transport will continue and you don't need to select the winning manufacturer of the best electric vehicles. They provide the infrastructure and that's really interesting. It's ultimately a less risky investment than having to invest into a single manufacturer who may not create a vehicle that's commercially viable and may never become profitable and successful. And so with every electric vehicle that's sold is a benefit for Blink regardless of the manufacturer. And next up, given where we are in the economic cycle, we also need to think about resilience. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know how obsessed I am about resilience and how important that is to generating long-term consistent returns that beat the market. Blink is extremely well positioned in the EV sector as a more resilient player versus some of the manufacturers. Now, let me talk you through that. So purchasing a new car is a big expenditure. It's a luxury good. And ultimately it comes out of discretionary expenditure, disposable income. So when we enter a downturn, unemployment rises, disposable incomes fall, and therefore demand falls for new vehicles. This is something that's been observed over many of the recent recessions. However, once you own an electric vehicle, to continue using it effectively, you need to charge it. It becomes less of a discretionary expenditure, and so therefore should be more resilient in a downturn. People will need to continue charging their cars if they want to drive them. Therefore, there'll be a lot smaller impact on demand. And there's a couple of things we need to know about Blink from a financial perspective. Number one, it has warrants. $6.8 million of warrants to be precise. These are ultimately gonna to convert to shares at some point. And what that ultimately means is that shareholders in the business now will be diluted, i.e. their shareholding as a percentage of the overall shareholding will decrease when those warrants are exercised. However, in this scenario, warrants are actually quite a useful tool to finance the business. The business is unlikely to be able to raise debt from banks and is certainly far too small to consider raising a bond. Secondly, the business is also not profitable. Historically, a lot of investment has gone into building out the sales team, but ultimately what this is doing currently is burning a lot of cash. There's two options here. They either need to turn it around quickly, really grow the sales and make the business profitable that way, or alternatively, and which I think is probably the more likely scenario, is the business will need to raise more money. It could do that through getting a loan from a bank, or more likely perhaps, it will raise new equity or issue new shares that will be sold to new shareholders. And again, 
similarly to the warrants, existing shareholders will be diluted by that. Next, you could spend a little bit of time looking at the balance sheet. However, when the business is of this size, you don't want to spend too long overanalyzing it. The key things I'm looking at to make sure there's no red flags are the debts and the upcoming payments, of which there's none of those, the payables, the receivables, and the inventory. All of those look broadly in check here, so that for me stacks up. Next up, we need to think about the competitive positioning. And in a market like this, it's so important to understand that. So Blink is the second largest player in the US with around 15,000 charging stations. The largest player in the market is ChargePoint. Now they have around 26,000 charging stations. However, unlike Blink, they don't actually operate any of those themselves. Additionally, a lot of the charging stations that Blink operates are located really well in areas where customers can charge their cars whilst they're shopping, whilst they're eating out. And this is really important. There are a number of other smaller players in the market as well. And as is always the case in a market like this, where there's massive growth opportunity, it will always attract new entrants. However, a good barrier to new entrants into this market is the fact that you ultimately need scale to be a successful player in the market. And to build that scale requires money. So that's an effective barrier to entry and gives us comfort that we know that the market's not gonna be flooded by new entrants, which ultimately would drive down the long-term margins. Those barriers to new entrants is what I typically like to see when I'm making an investment into a company. Even more so, are those barriers to entry so strong that perhaps this market could even develop into an oligopoly, one where a small number of players all command market-leading positions? Now, one thing that concerns me a bit about Blink is the quality of their products. As partly a product-based company, this is so important. I think there's actually question marks about how reliable Blink's products actually are. You just need to look at the 10K and dig into the warranties. The revenues generated from warranties fell by around 52% to $52,000. However, at the same time, the cost of fulfilling those warranties increased by 72% to $450,000. Ultimately, the revenues they're getting for those warranties are dwarfed by the cost by roughly nine times. Quality control here is something that Blink really needs to get a grasp on. If they don't, this could ultimately become a massive issue for the company. Bad reviews could put new customers off and ultimately charges not working will just build a bad brand image for Blink. Blink, by its nature as a penny stock, is also influenced massively by news flow. If we look at the recent news, the share price rose significantly as a result of Google announcing a partnership with Blink, where they'd be listing Blink's electric vehicle charging points on Google Maps. This is not the first time we've seen it. We also saw it in 2018, when there was rumors that the company was gonna enter a partnership with Tesla. That's something to bear in mind here. News, positive or negative, will have a massive influence on the share price. So what am I gonna do? Ultimately, the valuation here is very high, and there's no other way of looking at that. Investing in Blink is an investment into the electric vehicle sector. It's believing in the electrification of transport, and it's not necessarily trying to pick the winning horse in the electric vehicle race. What's more is that there can be multiple operators like Blink all operating at a large scale in the US. There's not going to be one winner. In the same way as when you look at petrol or, or gas stations in the US, there's multiple brands behind those. So Blink plus a handful of other names could all be winners in the sector and benefit from the massive growth. However, I do think you have to be so careful in this sector especially about the regulation. How much reliance is there on subsidies, on financial support for the companies or even the customers? Are there financial incentives in place in certain states to support people investing in the infrastructure for their homes, to invest in new electric vehicles? All of this ultimately has an impact on Blink. In 2019 in the US, a $7,500 electric vehicle credit came to an end. This ultimately coincided with a period of low oil prices and ultimately the impact was around 50,000 less electric vehicles sold in that period. So you can see how important that may be to the sector overall. Ultimately, the main headwind to the widespread adoption of electric vehicles is the charging infrastructure itself. So it's really important to understand what the regulatory landscape looks like there and what it's likely to look like going forward. Personally, I do like the business. I think it has a strong proposition. I think it's well positioned in the market, but where I'm struggling is the valuation. From my perspective, I'm gonna try and time my entry into the market. Now, I know it's notoriously difficult to time an investment, and this may end badly, however, hear me out. Currently, valuations are really high across the entire electric vehicle sector. There's a lot of hype in the sector. As we enter a recession, I think we are gonna see the sector cooling off somewhat. Demand is gonna fall for new vehicles, which will be reflected in the valuations of a number of the manufacturers. And as a result, the valuations will fall across the board. And ultimately, it's at that point that I think this could then be at a more sensible valuation and could be a really interesting opportunity. So thank you so much for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I always find it so interesting to hear everyone's thoughts and perspectives on the business. So please let me know yours, whether you're investing, whether you're not and why. If you like the video, please smash the like button. If you like investing related content, subscribe to the channel. I have some really exciting videos that you definitely don't want to miss. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.